Welcome back to another episode of the Archetypes of Destiny. I am Dr. La Bell Samurai, and with me today, as always, Christy Foster is here. Christy, how are you doing today? Doing well today. Thank you. Enjoying the springtime coming in. I'm excited about our conversation today. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. I think we 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 tried to have a conversation last week. We recorded, but we didn't think it was worth releasing. <laughs> And for a magician to say that, that's always problematic, right? Because that means it was a dud. I don't think it was a dud. I just think it was kind of not ready for prime time. So today we are back because we are ready for prime time. And because everybody is talking about our series of spellcasting, and so we thought we'd do another episode on spellcasting. <clears throat> So we did the first three episodes and we talked about what is a spell, what composes a spell, how the spell works, why it works the way it does. We're going to do a twist. It's like, why do magicians need spells? And why are they always looking for a shortcut? I think somebody criticized me one day and said, you're always looking for a shortcut. <laughs> um I think that is basically the archetype. Let's see how I got out of that one. Next time somebody says you're looking for a shortcut, say, I think it's the archetype. It's not me. <laughs> so, um, Christy, tell me about what's going on with you today. Well, I, as you talk about the magician and the spells, I've had a few people during this week specifically that uh, one through a text and one through a uh, client asking me, how do I get out of this? How do I ground mm. myself um, and not hold on to the past? Mm. And so I sent them some specific languaging to say, to hear themselves speak it mm. and directions to feeling in their body. And the bigger part was for them to keep coming back into both mm. of them are magicians, which I find interesting that mm. they asked me the question. Mm. And so giving them languaging and then bringing them back into their own body so they can connect with their feeling state mm. and because their thinking state was looping and getting them to where they didn't have clarity. Mm. And I would also say some fear because they weren't connecting mm. back into the body and back into a grounded space versus the intellect which magicians tend to run with the mind yeah and ask a lot of questions versus coming into well how did that feel or what well they're more comfortable in the ethereal right mm, yes they're more comfortable in that which is not touchable so is that why there's more of a, a challenge in the feeling state yes always types? always because you have to you have to drag yourself back into the body and connect with your body and feel your body and then answer the question that's why sometimes they're looked at as flippant arrogant irritated distant um what is those, some other words that use for them absent-minded mm, yes um, not present not present yeah and that that describes that describes the magician very well where did you go yes i was talking to you i've heard that many times right yeah where are too. you huh and where are you where are you yeah where did you yeah where did you go and where are you yeah yeah and if you tell them where you are they would freak out so you don't say anything it's like oh no i was listening so that's how they you respond. So why does the magician live in the ethereal world? Because that is the uh, draw and the power of the archetype. So who lives in this world? Well, that would be warrior, right? So if the warrior is grounded in this world, right? So they would have um gravity so their gravity holds them here 
the gravity for the magician pushes them out of this world. So they don't feel safe around a magician. So correct. What you're saying they they feel like the magician is up to something. Why are you up to something? Mm -hmm. You're always up to something. I think my brother says that to me. You're always up to something. I'm like, even when I'm not up to something, I think, well, now I have to live by that moniker. I can't, I can't just let that go. I have to figure something else out because I have to be up to something, right? Yes, which you're, which I, you usually are, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. It doesn't that, matter. I, I, I take that as a compliment coming from you. You are also always up to something. So yes. that that we understand about each other. This is this is a good thing. So. The magician is always up to something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are they up to? This is what drives the other archetypes a little, what's the word for it? Batty. Yeah. Well, just like you said in the beginning, you said that uh, magician takes shortcuts. And even as you mm. said, what are they up to? I completely would, I don't know if I would label it a shortcut, but I, I'm always looking for a better way, a different way. Um, that I can't see. Nature, that, nature, nature in itself is a shortcut. Nature does that. If you build on something, if you put concrete over and you build it and you, and then the grass starts growing from different sides, that's nature. Nature always has, it doesn't care. It's going to take a shortcut. But even if it has to go grow through concrete, yeah, it will. Right? Mm -hmm. So I would say that the shortcut is forced upon because of nature. You mean within the archetype? Absolutely. Okay. Because 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 nature as an aspect is a, is is archetypal. It's an archetype. Mother nature. Yes. Yeah. We call her Mother Nature, we call her Mother Earth, we call her all different type of names, right? Yeah. But Divine feminine. She, but she is creation. Yeah. Creation is a shortcut. Hmm. Creation always because the shortcut is smart. When you when you cut through something, you are actually moving one piece from point A to point B. The faster you can move it, the more efficient it is. The slower it moves, the more problems you have. I can see why that would be the case. Right? Yeah. So if you're working on a highway, it's a long process because you're fixing one thing at a time. So what's going to happen? Things that you fixed at the beginning are going to break down as you get closer to the end. And you're going to have to go back and refix them. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking, we're talking about the magician archetype, the magician archetype is going to um, tune into and try to see those moving parts and, and get to the center of it. How Correct. quickly versus standing in line and doing a step-by-step -step process. Beautifully said. So what's the next step? Well, what's the easiest way to get, cut through something? An idea. What yeah. Is the big, what, what is the shortcut? An idea. Oh, I have an idea. I used to say that a lot as a kid. I know the magicians out there, they say it all the time. I had an idea. Yeah. I had a thought. What if we did it this way? I told them how to do it. They didn't listen to me. Well, and sometimes I've had dreams about different clients Ooh. where that has come in through my dream. Yes. Solution. About the how. Yeah. yeah. Solution. Some of the biggest solutions came through dreams. Mm -hmm. And they were very simple. Because everybody was looking for the more complex solution. And the dream tells you the simplest solution, which is a shortcut. So your dream cheated. It took the shortcut. 
Uh, I'm glad it did. That sounds mm. like a negative thing, and it isn't. No, because dreams belong in the ethereal. They do, dreams. and they tell us so much about who we are, what we're fighting, what we're afraid of. Where we're going. Where we're going, which can be a little tricky if you don't understand the dream. And scary. Yeah. And it gives us meaning when meaning is lost. Within the dream. Mm. Always, because it brings us back to the importance of connecting. Mm. So if you're not dreaming and you're a magician archetype, mm. there's, a, a, good, there's a disconnect a happening. You're not in a good place. If you're disconnected from your dreams or you can't remember or you're waking up feeling empty, uh, you're not in good shape. Maybe depression. Yeah, because there's a heaviness in that. Yeah, not and you wake up empty. As a magician, you wake up empty without dreams. If you don't have an idea, a thought, an expression in the morning in your head as you wake up, it feels like it's empty. That day is going to be shrouded, unclear. Because usually when you wake up as a magician, you have an idea. There's a thought. There's a path. There's a way. There's something that can be done that day. Even if you don't do anything, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know. Right. You still do not wake up without something. Right. So, so somebody at this point would ask and say, doesn't everybody have that? I've learned not to ask that because that's usually the first thing I do ask. And no, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. That's the answer. So. Um, so this is why the magician goes to. The spell. The spell is the shortcut. Okay, so you're going to say, okay, so the spell is cheating. Okay, because who says a shortcut is cheating? Warriors. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love my warriors. Warriors say a shortcut is cheating. And you're not playing by the rules. Okay, so archetypally, let's talk about the rules. Magicians don't believe in rules. They True. believe in breaking, bending, maneuvering rules. They don't believe in rules. Rules See, are... I would say, doesn't everyone believe that? Before no, warriors about... believe in rules. Yeah. Kings believe, kings and queens believe in rules. And order. Lovers don't. Not everybody. Uh, our uh, our brothers and sisters, the lovers, they don't believe in rules. No. Yeah, we will hold that conversation until uh, our friend Lance joins us because he has many ideas about that. So I would love to have that conversation about. Lovers. Yes, and magicians, why they irk each other. But let's get back. Spells. Okay. What is a spell I want everybody to ask themselves? What is a spell that works on you? So I'm going to give you an example. So I have a spell that works on me. The spell always is something is coming. Hmm. And it's almost here. And that keeps me moving. I am waiting for this something to come. And meanwhile, as it's coming, I am trying to prepare myself for its coming. Right? Right. So that's a spell that works on me. I use that. Or the spell is part of what I hear. 
what comes to me all the time. And so how does it come? What, what is this mysterious thing that's coming that I am waiting for? Well, sometimes it's an idea. Sometimes it's a thought. Sometimes it's um, something to do, a place to go, a person to reach out to. And that would lead into, that would start to unveil the rest of what was coming. Because as soon as it's connected to something else, suddenly I start to see the pattern of where it's going. But at first, it's veiled. But at the same time, it's connected. So the spell is veiled, but connected. Okay, so those are like two rudimentary parts the veiled and the connected. Now, how is it connected? Well, this, we look for the lover's energy. I'm going to borrow from that magic of theirs. Love. Mm. Love is what happens in between. McCoon says this. I love the way she says this. Love is what happens in the in-between. What happens between two people, it's the in-between. This is the energy that's being exchanged. Now, this could be kind of like passionate love, or it could be just love. Like you appreciate, you care, you defend, you think of, or you just remember that person. They're gone now. But love happens in the in-between. And how is it elicited, right? How is it moved? It's not, it always exists. It's moving. Do you move with it? You think you control it. You think it's yours when you say, I'm in love. No. It's gotten a hold of you. Right? Nina Simone and her song, I Put a Spell on You. It's put its grips into you and it pulls you in. All right, so connected, veiled, love. Okay, what else does this spell need? Right? Needs intention. Yes. Christy? Well, when I'm hearing you say that, when I said an intention, uh, most importantly, it is for me to feel it as if it's already here. Ooh. And know that it's coming to me. The language that you're using is what I will put in my intention is it's coming to me mm. like I don't have to go outside of myself to find it that as I practice being present and practice coming into that moment of the in-between as you're speaking about that's really when clarity comes mm. for me is when I come out of the busyness of being distracted and make room for more of that feminine play and energy and creation that's when that's when it comes in and i don't have to work for it so whatever is created the intention the veiled the intention comes through from the veiled to the connected and then what the connected connects to is the in-between. So that's the energy in between all of us. As an organism, the way we move, the way we move as peoples across this planet, the way we move, that energy. Okay. So then what are we doing? Well, we're moving energy. What is the spell doing? It's moving energy. It wants to move the energy because the energy is not moving in the right order or I'm not happy with the movement. Mm. It can be moving in the right direction. I just want to change directions. That is possible. Yeah. So all of this comes back from the veiled with the intention through the connected 
to the in-between to move the energy. Ultimately, we're moving the energy. That means what we're doing is a form of magic. Those, yeah. those are those are the pieces of the spell that make the spell. So if you're looking at any decent spell, it has all those elements. If the spell is working, look for the elements. What is this spell? How can you do what you do? Look at the elements of the spell. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Dr. Chelsea Shields, and she talked about Nike and how elegant it is that they have like this line that says, just do it. And I thought, yes. Just do it. Okay, so it's a short spell, but it has all the elements. Can you see all the elements? Just do what? Veiled? Yeah. Just do it. Connected? Just do what? The in-between? And then just do it is energy. You see all the elements of the spell. And suddenly, if you have an image with it, now it's seeping through you. Now it's taking over. The image is taking over the idea. The idea is taking over the image. Suddenly it makes perfect sense. You need a shoe. I don't know how you put that together. And Nike, by the way, is a Greek god. Oh, that's right. I do remember talking about that in the archetypes. And so the people at Nike who started Nike are magicians, right? Which is why they would have that logo. Absolutely. Yeah. I hadn't thought about magicians because they created Air Jordan. Now, Jordan was already there. He was already a symbol. But they added the magic to the symbol. And now the symbol flies. Well, and every time a kid puts on a pair of those shoes. They think they could fly. They think they can fly. Yes. Yeah. And they'll run faster. They'll do better. It's already just, created. Just do it. Gone. Yeah. Just do it. Beautiful. And they probably believe they can just do it. Elegant, beautiful, creative, impressive, very hard to come by. Very, very difficult to recreate. Just do it. Because you basically took like three very, very like simple words. Just do and it. And suddenly you have something completely different. It's a very good example. Ooh. Thought of that. Because yeah. it is, it's the simplicity that makes it so good though. Exactly. Yeah. And the spell is that these shoes are magical. Yeah. So just do it. So just do it could mean buy them, wear them, run with them. Just do it. It's just there for you. But you can only do it with them. <laughs> Which is also so part just of do it is just for Nike. Anybody else could say it doesn't have the meaning that it does because Nike was able to mm -hmm. infiltrate the spell into the airwaves. And so everybody heard the spell. So the spell is worldwide. Yeah. So a little kid in the middle of nowhere knows a pair of Nikes. In the middle of nowhere. Okay. That's a powerful spell. That's how, that's how spell casting works. Mm -hmm. These are the elements. Right? They bring in a bunch of marketing coordinators and they bring in rebranding experts and they bring in all kinds of people to create these campaigns, correct? 
Uh, no, sorry, that's a rhetorical question, Christy. But it is basically they bring them in for what? They bring in the magicians to create a piece of magic. They use only the piece of magic, one piece. Yeah. They throw out everything else. Everything else is rubbish. One piece. One spell. So every time you can compose that, you do it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Right? Facebook, what is Facebook? That's what is Facebook? A lot of answers. A spell on for lovers. To connect. To connect. Mm. And I hear that a lot too. I found him on Facebook. He found me. I found him on Facebook. So Back Facebook it becomes that. synonymous with connecting. <clears throat> but that doesn't compare to what Nike did. What Nike did was create a spell and then mesmerize all the kids in the world mm -hmm. with the spell. Because suddenly the spell started to have figures. They could fly. They could do things with the ball. No, nobody can do. Yeah. So the next thing that they came up with uh, was, I want to be like Mike, I think. I think it was them also. Like was, Michael Jordan. I want to be like Mike. And it was like he would jump up. It was like a whole song right. with music. And images of him jumping and being in the air and flying. Ooh. Flying. And being amazing. Yeah. That someone could tap into their own amazingness with the pair yeah. of them. Yeah. And it's saying that you're all like Mike. You're not all like Mike. No. <laughs> you can be, you can want to be like Mike, but you're not like Mike. Mike is Mike. So when we talk about spells, they could be as simple as just do it. Or they could be more complex. What other spells can we think of that mm -hmm. um, their brevity is enjoyable? Well, one that comes to my mind is um, around sovereignty. Ooh. And it can apply with little children. It applies with mm. adults more so of um, to ask the question, who holds your power? Because what the world is, well, it's about power. And that, yes. right, it can be based on what we wear, just like we talked about the Jordans. If I wear nike air jordans i'm more powerful because mm. i believe i am yeah right yeah and so if if we're in a healing process which mo a lot of people are to ask the question who who holds your power yeah because if someone else is holding it that's an issue but for you to start to believe that you're the one that holds your power and to even say that mm. i am a sovereign being and i I hold my own power. I hold my own identity versus someone else holding it. I think that's a very simple one. I am sovereign. I am sovereign. Mm, I love and, that. And no one has power over me. Mm, no one has power over me. Yes. So that is that is a spell to break the spell. Yes, because the spell was created. Uh, Maybe that isn't simple. That That is a beautiful counteracting spell yeah that spell says i am withdrawing my power i am taking it back i'm not going to give it to you yes right yeah mm -hmm. and the awareness that you've been under a spell yes right and that's why we need that spell yes yeah. well i remember reading uh the first time i read melody Beattie's book codependent no more I remember reading it. I was fairly young and I thought, how did I get in this book? Mm. How did I 
she's talking about spells without using that word that other people can control what I do and think and say. And then I, I look at it now and that was a spell that I learned mm -hmm. to break. Yeah. It's a good yeah. example. Magicians writing books. Well, I recognize myself in the book. Yeah, because a magician wrote it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see yourself in the book. Yeah, I most definitely. The archetype is speaking to you directly. You know, and uh, you read something and you say, it was like he's talking to me. That means that the person who wrote the book, their archetype, is talking to your archetype, meaning that you already know that language. Right. Yeah, they're not talking to you. You already know that language. That language is yours. It makes sense, because I yeah. don't resonate with warrior books. No, I, I, this, what's fascinating is that uh, uh, the body keeps the score. I was reading it, and I was like, wait a second. That's fascinating. Have that language I use, I talk about. I've never seen this book before. <laughs> I speak this way. Ah, magician. Yeah. That's the first that's the first thought I had that came to me right after that. I was like, oh, I use that language. I was like, oh, magician. Yeah, because that's the way of the thinking and how it moves. The ideas move in a certain path, in a certain pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. And it also, when you read it, you understood it without having read it before. Mm. Why do romance novels sell so many books? Right? It's the spell. Yeah. It's it a $5 billion industry. It's a spell. People will say, I couldn't put it down. I've heard that. Yeah. In connecting that, I feel like I was under a spell. I couldn't put it down till I finished four Ooh. hours later. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good example. So are lovers reading romance novels? No. Are lovers writing romance novels? No. Who's churning out romance novels? Magicians. In cahoots with the lovers. The lovers, the lovers are inadvertently telling them, oh, no, that spell doesn't work. You have to use this one. Yes, because they do know about that quite well. Yeah, but they're not the ones who are writing them. No, they're creating music and art to connect to what's Correct. been Correct. Yeah. They're the in-between. They're not the romance novel. The romance novel is not in-between. It's the veiled, it's the unseen. It's speaking to something else. Mm. And so we have all these hidden places where spells are abound. Right? Yeah. yeah, and those spells bind, literally bind people. Yes. In their flesh they bind them in in a culture mm. to a group to a group yeah mm. to and a family system yes mm. even the question also i hear a lot is how do i get out of that how, how do, do i, I not in, be so entangled it's sticky what is the spell to get out i am sovereign I am, yes, because you're out talking about power. I am sovereign and I reclaim my power. Yeah. And so you have case. no power here, which is here. In your heart. Yes. Mm. That is where intention lies. Yeah. So we are discussing today the spells that bind us the spells that hold us, the spells that we tell ourselves, the spells that we spell cast on ourselves. Mm. The yeah. way Merlin was caught was 
Morgana used the spell in his dream. And he basically recited the spell in his dream and put himself under the spell. And she neutralized him that way for years, decades. more magician more kind of yeah creating the spell and illusion without it being seen yeah yeah she she had him she had him reveal the spell it's the spell of creation but if you give the spell of creation if you say it in your sleep you basically are holding stasis You are not here in this world and you're not in the other world. You're in the in-between. Mm. She trapped him in the in-between. At least that's one version. There are many versions of Morgana and Merlin's relationship. And yeah. Some of them were more allied some of them were more antagonistic. Depending on the time, those stories changed. There weren't always, they were very, very close. Did something happen? We don't. Mm, but the idea and the about the spell itself and power and mm. taking who, power. Who has it? Right. Very who powerful. Can, who can give it? Well, and that's still alive and well today. Absolutely. We talk about Merlin like it's a mystical no. character. It is very much alive, and we no. create all the time. Merlin and Morgana exist with us all the time. Yeah. They exist in the same realm, in the same archetype. They are not separate archetypes. Merlin no. Again, are not separate because one is feminine and one is masculine. They are the same. You're just not looking from the right door. So when you enter a room, you enter from the back door. What do you see? You see the back of the room. When you enter from the front door, what do you see? You see the front of the room. If you enter from the side door, you see the side of the room. Now, for a different perspective, I just come from the top. Which would be a magician's move. That would be. Yes. A so short that's way. where I would see it. <laughs> Right? That's a shortcut. So forget the top, top, the bottom, whatever. I'm going to see it from, I want to see everything. Yeah. Right? Well said, magician. <laughs> well, thank you, magician. Well said. So, any, any other thoughts, Christy, on today's podcast before we say goodbye? Just... Uh, pay, staying aware of your language and what mm -hmm. it is you create, what it is you tell yourself about um, needing permission, maybe perhaps who you think holds power over you and paying attention to that inner voice because that's where creation is, mm. is in our it's within us and we can create something different if we don't like what's being created. Uh, beautifully said. Beautifully said. So the power, whether you're a magician or not, resides within you. Mm -hmm. You are sovereign and you need to reclaim your power. Nobody should have that power, that power is yours. Yeah. So, with that, we will be back next week. Maybe with a special guest. Yeah, we'll talk about the lovers. Mm, we'll talk about the lovers and the magicians. All right. Good to see everybody and talk to you soon. Have a good one.